Hi, I'm Will Ruddick, and this is the sixth installment of the Village Market Simulator. Um, what we're going to do today is show how we can create communities of currencies, of multiple currencies. And we're going to do this using the open source Bancor protocol, and I'm going to step you through kind of how that works. So, in the simulation here, we've got um, uh, similar to the last few videos, we've got an external market up in the top right, <clears throat> and then we have some kind of suburb or slum or village um, here with about a hundred traders, and money is coming in on a weekly to monthly basis to workers, and that circulates and pumps back out to the city. <clears throat> but at the same time, what's happened here is that we have several currencies going on in the city, and I want to show you how several currencies can interact with each other and sort of act as one community currency that's more resilient. So, um, first off, um, we've got uh, these agents here, and I just want to describe how that is. So we've got uh, seven agents. We've got service sector, production, workers, laborers in blue, um, different types of cooperatives that are either service-based or production-based, retail shops and foreign retail shops. And so this is really an uh, approximation, a generalization of a community, and it's good enough for our purposes of, of demonstrating what's going on here. So first I'm gonna clear all this off, and I'm gonna create um, kind of two kind of mock-up communities here. <clears throat> and uh, we can say one of them is similar to one of our programs here in Kenya. In the top left here, this is like Bangladesh, where we have some people working in the community um, working for the outside uh, uh, city like Mombasa or Nairobi. They're spending their money locally and eventually they buy imports and that money goes back out to the city. So we've created a currency here similar to Bangla Pesa in red. <clears throat> so it's flowing around, it's creating some stability in that system. But as we've shown in some previous videos, um, that's only as resilient as the, the diversity of the network, you know, how many businesses are in it. And if people start pulling out or defaulting where they spend their currency and they don't accept it back, you end up with a lot of chances for critical failure and, and slow growth. So this is a challenge we've had in Kenya, is that we've created several currencies, um, but there's been very little way to connect them together. So now I'm going to show you, I'm going to create another community over here. Those communities aren't connected with each other, not, they're not trading with each other, but they're fairly close neighbors. Um, so in the bottom right here, this could be Gomeni Peza, um, which is also in Mombasa. And you can see they have their yellow currency here, <clears throat> and those two currencies aren't trading with each other. And so this is a big problem we have. We've created lots of currencies in Kenya, for instance, but how do we set a common value for them to trade with each other and the way we've done that so far on paper is that we've connected them to the Kenyan shilling we say one voucher is always equal to you know the equivalent amount of Kenyan shillings but that very much depends on the supply and so grassroots economics is a nonprofit that is creating the supply for these communities they're issuing it into the community essentially airdropping it and they're doing it in equal ways in those communities but as we get more and more currencies how do we establish that the supply of this currency isn't 10x the supply of this other currency, which would make their value different, right? So the, the solution that uh, Bancor came up with um, and, and the Bancor protocol is basically the fruition of this, is to connect these currencies to a common reserve. Okay, and so the idea is that these two communities you see on the, the screen here could connect to a common reserve token. So if I look at my tokens here, I can see at the top level here, that's the reserve token. There's a certain amount of it. We say its value starts at, at one Kenyan shilling. And we've created two um, community currencies here. There's, there's one red and one yellow. And right now they're not trading with each other at all. They both started with the equal amount of supply of these currencies. And now we're gonna say, okay, Let's enable the Bancor protocol and allow them to start trading with each other. So first, I'm gonna I'm gonna add some traders in the middle here. I'm gonna enable the Bancor protocol <clears throat> so that there's some connection between the two currencies. And what you're going to see in the tokens here is that these these two community currencies, their value, um, the price of them relative to that reserve currency is going to fluctuate up and down, right? So as the yellow currency um, or the red currency in the top left, as these traders in the middle decide they want to take that red currency and trade it into the yellow currency, 
because <clears throat> there's something they want to buy in that other community, what that's going to do is reduce the value of the red currency and it's going to increase the value of the yellow currency. And so that's what's happening right now. So if you look here, the price of one unit of the yellow currency is 1.14 compared to 0.84 of the other currency. So they're, they're, they're shifting, they're pivoting around that central reserve. And what that does is it bring, brings a lot of stability to this network. So if um, this yellow currency or the red currency were to die off, well, they would still have the yellow currency to trade with. And so the more of these currencies interacting, it's a way for us to connect many, many different communities. And in, in Kenya, for instance, in one city or one slum, there's so many diverse groups, right? There's different religious groups, different tribes, and there's a lot of like neighborhoods and sections. So to imagine one community currency spreading through that entire network based on one cooperative or one group is quite hard because the membership of that cooperative is maybe only 200 people. How is that going to spread through the entire network? And so this gives us a way of creating one community currency made out kind of a patchwork of smaller community currencies. Um, let's see, so, so the banker protocol, again, it's this open source protocol. They have to connect with the reserve to each other. Um, if you look here at the connector weight is 50%. That's the, the key thing is that each one of these currencies has a certain amount of reserve and the supply to reserve is always a fixed number. So if they say that their connector weight or their reserve ratio is 50%, that means for every 100 shillings worth of the uh, reserve token, they can create 200 shillings um, of credit. And um, this is very similar in a way to how banks work um, in terms of creating credit. But in this case, when a community creates their credit, if they keep pumping the supply up, it will automatically, the banker protocol will automatically reduce the value of that credit. And so that's very different than the current system where a private bank in Kenya can issue, you know, a billion shillings worth of credit and there's, the feedback mechanism is not fast enough right now. Like if they create that, that uh, you know, billion shillings of credit and they start defaulting as a bank, all of their clients can start really suffering over the next year. But in this case, that's really instantaneous. So if people are going to default in some way or ruin their credit supply, this creates an instant feedback mechanism for that. Um, the other thing I wanted to show was, um, as we create more currencies here, um, let's, say, let's say this is a much larger community and we have you know, about a dozen currencies you know, going up and down in, in value compared to each other. Um, you're definitely going to have currencies that that will collapse to some degree and what this does is it makes sure that as they collapse they're actually giving their reserve their value into these other currencies and so I think that's a it's a really important concept to sort of accept the concept that there will be defaulting there will be situations where let's say a currency is based on uh, a school, for instance, it's a voucher for the school fees. And what if that school collapses? Um, or what if the um, the teachers all go on strike and people can't use that currency anymore? This gives them an option to now buy into another currency. So that other currency might be at another school, or it might be to buy food. And so it's a way of like in the past, as a currency collapses, you really you have no way out. Right, so in a single community currency, it's very fragile in that sense. If 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 enough businesses default, or if businesses collapse, or it's a bad enough time, you still have the same um, volatility or uh, vulnerability as you did in a way with a national currency. Right, as the national currency was coming in, if that national currency ever stopped coming in, your community trade would just stop. And so the single community currency that we've done in Kenya. We, we've shown that that acts as a nice buffer, but we also have some fragility to it. So, um, you know, with, with a dozen or so currencies in a large community, we're able to really boost the resilience. So it, it's a much stronger local currency built up of smaller currencies. Now, these reserve currencies, like how do we create the reserve currency? Right now, it's just a token on the blockchain, right? So we've started moving into the blockchain because who maintains that ledger like we need to know who's issuing how much and we need to make sure that um, as they're issuing it, it has to be transparent right so the blockchain is a distributed ledger it's basically we get to know all these credit issuers all these liquidity providers how much they're issuing um, at any given time and that makes it so that the bank or protocol can act to make sure that 
prices are automatically adjusted as credit is created or destroyed. Um, and so by being on the blockchain again, we have also the ability to secure this ledger across the entire planet of people who are duplicating these ledgers. Um, so there's a lot of security here and the blockchain is finally kind of caught up to the point where we can do these things with no transaction fees or very, very small ones. Um, we're using POA network right now, which are side chains on Ethereum to do this. And uh, we piloted this over the last few weeks in Kenya and it's, it's, it's starting to work really well. So we're, I'm excited over the next few weeks to see, um, see how this goes. So again, it's a banker protocol. It's an open source uh, protocol. You can check it out on GitHub. And uh, the, um, the code for this simulation is also on GitHub. If you look up grassroots economics on GitHub, you'll find it under VMS or Village Market Simulator. So thank you very much. Have a good day.